Hello everybody and welcome to this brief introduction to Markdown. What is Markdown? Markdown is a simple language that allows you to write structured documents. It's a language that was specifically invented for publishing on the web. So the idea here is that you can write simple text that will turn into formatted text to be published on the web. And it's something that I think is really useful if you want to write content mostly and you want to focus on writing content without being bothered with the specifics of formatting too much. Personally, I use Markdown a lot to write blog posts. I use Markdown for documentation purposes, for APIs, for example. An increasing number of API platforms allow you to write documentation in Markdown because, again, this documentation will be published on the web. And there are many other examples where Markdown is a supported format. For this tutorial, I will use the Atom editor. The Atom editor is an open source and free editor that you can download for a variety of platforms. It has support for Markdown, meaning that you can write Markdown, which is a simple text format, but it then also has a preview pane where you can see what your Markdown looks like in a formatted way, which gives you a good idea of what, for example, your Markdown will look like on the web when you write your blog post in the editor and then it will be published on the web at some point in time. Let's dive right into what Markdown can do for you. Markdown is, as I said, text-based, meaning that it has a couple of special characters that you can use, and those characters have special meaning that create formatting, that create structure. Let's get started with a title. Headings are written by using hash signs, and you can have a heading like this. You can have a second level heading by using two hash signs. You can have a third level heading by using three hash signs and so forth. So this gives you a first structuring capability for your content where you can write headings. There's no support for heading numbers, and that is because Markdown pretty easily maps to HTML, and HTML doesn't have support for automatically numbering headings or sections as well and therefore this is what you get in Markdown. Once you're done with, let's say, creating an outline, creating this initial structure of headings, you can start writing a paragraph, start writing, and as you can see, it will show up as text, and even if you put in multiple lines, it will do the same as it does in HTML, meaning that your lines don't translate to lines in the formatted output, it will all be one paragraph. If you want to write another paragraph, you have to leave a blank line, and then you will get another paragraph. That's a very simple thing to follow, so you can structure your text into lines or not, depending on what you prefer. And if you want to start another paragraph, you just leave a blank line. Headings and paragraphs give you the very basic structure of what you can do with documents. Now let's look into some other things that you can do. Another thing you can do is you can create lists. So a list, sorry, this is a list. And as you can see, if you start a line with a dash and then leave a blank and write something that will be formed into a list. You can also have sublists by inserting the dashes even more. And then you can have these lists within lists. And you can nest that pretty much any level deep. Again, this directly translates to something that HTML can do for you because Markdown pretty directly was derived from HTML's capabilities. So the lists are really useful and something you want to use pretty often, I would guess. Sometimes you also want to have numbered lists. So you can say, this is a numbered list. And as you can see, the numbers that I put in here, even if I change them, 
don't make any difference in the formatted output. So the numbers mostly serve as a reminder that this is a numbered list. The actual numbering then is taken care of by the markdown formatting, which is convenient because now I can just insert something here and I don't have to go through the whole list and redo the numbering because the numbering is automatic. This is something that makes it easy to write numbered lists and you can also mix these numbered lists Sorry, they have to be items. This is a list, right? And now you see you can mix the numbered lists and the non-numbered lists. Another very simple thing to do. What else can you do? Very simple. Let's look at, let's look at emphasis. Emphasis. So emphasis is something you can do by using asterisks. So very simply done. And there also is strong emphasis. And as you can see in this example and in most other environments, I would say you will see that emphasis is formatted as italic and strong emphasis is formatted as bold. But this is not really something you can control. You can just say this is an emphasis and this is a strong emphasis. And again, this is something that HTML does. It allows you to say emphasis and strong emphasis and how this will be formatted is then up to the renderer to decide. So up to the formatting engine. But like I said, in most cases, you will see italic and bold. So this is something that is important as well. Because Markdown was designed as a language for content on the web, and it's something that maps very easily to HTML. There are, of course, links. How do links look like? So a link has anchor text. That is the text that will be used to create the link. And then you create the actual link by putting in the URI here. So now this is a link that I can mouse over. And if I want to put in some a title tip that I will see when I hover over it, I can do that as well. And as you can see now, it shows up there. So this is something I can do as well. And again, this is something that very directly translates to web publishing. Links are very common, of course, on the web. And this is something that you will use a lot. Another thing you can do, again, something very directly derived from HTML, is adding images. So how do you add images? An image looks kind of similar to what a link looks like, but it has a, an exclamation point in front of it. So first you put in some alternate text. Then you put in the URI of the image. And here I have one that happens to be an animated GIF, doesn't matter. And you can also here put in, again, the title text that when I mouse over this image over here, you can see the title text shows up. So this is a simple way of how I can embed images. Once again, very directly derived from HTML, makes it very easy for me to embed images into my document. These images either can be local. In this case, the image happens to be in the same directory as the document that I'm using here. But if that's not the case, you can also put in full URIs as the image link, as the link to the image file. And then if your client is able to retrieve the image, it will actually do that. And you can link, you can embed images from anywhere on the web as long as they're available. So images are another thing we have, and then we are almost done already. But let's look at one last thing that personally I use a lot because I write a lot about code. So if you have code that you want to work with, um, there is a specific kind of formatting you can have by using backticks or apostrophes depending on how you want to call these things. I call them backticks. And these backticks will cause the, your text to be rendered in 
some kind of monospaced font. So in most cases, this is something that looks like code and can be used, for example, to highlight keywords or to highlight a special element that in many cases probably has something to do with code. You can also have longer pieces of code. In that case, you can use three backticks and then write some code. And then when you close that with three backticks, you will get this code block formatted that allows you to write, for example, a piece of code to embed a piece of code that will look like kind of computer code. And most importantly, it will keep in that case, the line breaks as you put them into your document, which is important for code, right? If when we remove those back ticks, then the line breaks will no longer be used for formatting because now it becomes a simple paragraph and the line breaks will not appear in the formatted output. And now we're almost done. One last thing you can do. One last thing is block quotes. So block quotes are the thing that you often see on the web where, or in emails also, where people quote text and want to see that quotation represented in formatting. And if you want to do that, there's a very easy way of doing it. You do it in the same way as you do it, for example, in emails you put a greater than sign in front of it. You can have multiple lines, but again, it will be formatted in the same way as a paragraph, meaning that your line breaks in the document will not use, will not be used for formatting, but in, in, instead all of the block code will turn into one paragraph that is formatted as a block quote. And that's, already it. That's all there is to Markdown. It's a really simple format. It's really useful. And for me personally, it's also something that allows me to write with less distractions. I can just write Markdown. I don't really have to think about, you know, like pulling down menus and figuring out how the software works. It's really just focusing on writing the text using very simple mechanisms to structure my text. And then later on, maybe I can work on the formatting. Maybe I can tune it a little bit, but it's not something that distracts me while I'm focusing on the content and writing. One thing you may have noticed is that Markdown is so simple. There are not even tables in it. And that's one of the disadvantages of the basic Markdown format that it's really very, very limited. That also means that this is something a lot of people have noticed. There are a lot of Markdown variants out there that add additional capabilities such as tables and many other things, but none of these really is as widely supported as the things that I have just shown you. So if you need to have more capabilities in the content that you write in Markdown, there probably is some language out there for you. So you can look for it, search for the features that you need, and you will probably find some Markdown dialect that adds those features. But when you use those features, be aware of the fact that you're outside of the very basic set of Markdown mechanisms that everybody is supporting. So your portability of your content may suffer a little bit. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked this tutorial. It's very brief. It's a very simple thing, but I think it's very useful. I hope you found it useful as well. If you did, please like. If you have any comments, please make sure to get in touch. And if you want to see more content around APIs and some tooling around them, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Bye.